Hi, I'm Ken Levine. I'm the creative director of Irrational Games, and we're talking about Bioshock Infinite. Um, well, the game's not coming up to 2012, just to be clear. Um, you know, from where we are as a developer, we've been working on this for about two and a half years now. So it's not sort of like, for, you know, it's not just for us. I mean, Bioshock, we weren't involved in Bioshock 2, so it sort of happened. We weren't really seeing it even in, in the process. And um, so I can definitely understand from a perspective of, of, of where, where you're sitting or, your, or, your, or your, your audience might be sitting. But for us, you know, we were sort of like, we, did, we came out with Bioshock in 2007, and that's, that's a fairly long, long period of time in between. And the reason we're talking about it now, there's a couple of reasons. One is um, there's a lot to talk about in this game. And usually if you do a sequel, it's like, okay, you do six months, eight months, whatever, because you're, oh, here are the five new weapons, here are the five new monsters, go. And that's usually a very straightforward um, conversation to have. So we wanted people to have that experience. We wanted to make sure the surprise didn't get out. And that's keeping a secret is very difficult in, in this industry. Um, but, um, you know, the first reaction was people were like, what, 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 I, I don't, what, what am I seeing here? Like, it's a Bioshock game, but is it a Bioshock? I don't, I don't understand it. And they were excited and confused and scared and crying and, you know, all these different emotions they were having. That's what we wanted. We wanted people to have an emotion when they saw this. We wanted people to get excited or scared or, you know, or, or, or even mad, you know, any of these things because I think we've gotten, the industry has gotten so, here's a sequel, here's five new monsters, here's five new levels, you know, here it is, it's this year's model. And we want to do something very different, but that also means that that's going to take some time to explain to people. Like we had about a year and a half before Bioshock came out before um, when we started talking about the game. And we, we thought we needed a similar period of time to talk about this game to let people understand what we were trying to do and, 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 and take people through the different aspects of it. Um, well, you know, for us, it was... It, Bioshock 2 wasn't sort of the right project for us as a studio. We sort of, we had, we, as a studio, we had said what we wanted to say about, about Rapture. And I'm not saying we'll never go back there again. Um, you know, it's something we love. And, you know, for, I mean, I have a big daddy and a little sister, a giant big daddy and a little sister in my living room in my house. Um, it's everything to me. But on the other hand, creatively and artistically, I think the team had said what we wanted to say about that. And we wanted to challenge ourselves. Because if we're not challenging ourselves, if we're not going to work in the morning and going, oh, my God, how are we going to do this? Then we're never going to create something that's, exciting and new for the audience because we already know, if we already know how to do it then you've already seen it you know and so we were excited about columbia we were um you know working on this demo there was a fever pitch of anticipation in the studio to get it out there because it'd been secret for so long i think people couldn't even tell their families about it like we had you've heard stories about um you know, like when they were working on Return of the Jedi, how they'd call it code names. We had co the game was codenamed Icarus internally. Emails were we'd refer to it as Icarus. We weren't we weren't um, revealing it to anybody. People people's families didn't know what they were working on. My nephews were dying down there. They asked me, "Come on, just tell me, just tell me," and I couldn't tell them. Um, and you know th that was that was that was really challenging. But you know, we we, we knew that if we waited and we had the right timing for it, that. And we, the game was at the right point to show that would have the most impact for people. Yeah, I mean, look, Bioshock games, I think, are dark games. You know, they're, they're thematic, thematically dark. Not, I think Bioshock 1 and 2 are also visually dark. And we wanted to, it's another thing we want to sort of not be able to use old tricks that we had learned. We want to challenge ourselves and, you know, the first prototypes we did for this game were on a similar, more similar color palette. Um, and then one day I, I'd done a bunch of research and I'm sort of doing research into you know, the notion of American exceptionalism in that time period, a ton more research. And all of a sudden the thought of what if this game looked like, and I came in, I told the team, July 4th, 1900. But, that, but that's how, how people think it was, you know, how they think it, it existed, this idealized version of it the sun pounding down and the hummingbirds and bees buzzing in the trees and that is something that was it's such an evocative idea that everybody in the team immediately said oh, okay i get it i get it that makes total sense and everything started coming together and then the challenge is how do you make sort of take the darkness of, of theme and mix that with the lightness of look and we think that was another thing that's going to you know that's a, a new challenge for us and it's 
But whenever you're in a new space, you have to, it's good and bad. Because one, nobody else is doing exactly that. But two, how do you do it? And we look to guys like um, filmmakers, like David Lynch, you know, if you ever see Blue Velvet, you know, the opening of Blue Velvet with the, the grass and the, and the, and the ear sit, you know, sitting in the grass. Or um, The Shining, which is fluorescent lit, you know, these, these sort of pastel colors, fluorescent lit. It's not a stormy castle on a hill. Um, and the, I think well, the, the reason those films are so striking is because they did something quite different. And, but that doesn't make it easy. Well, they'll have the demo, they have the trial, they'll have the demo soon, in the near future. Uh, what? The, a, a video of the demo, sorry, the, not, not actually the playable, the no, no playable demo in the near, in the near future. Um, and, um, and then, you know, we'll be talking more about the game. You know, we've already been thinking about what's important to show next to the audience. And we always sort of, when we do our demos, like, you know, first we showed in the first Bioshock 1 demo, we showed Rapture. Second one was about fighting a big daddy. So probably one of the next demos would be about those skylines you saw. You know, because they seem, they're an amazing combat experience and you actually play them. Imagine like a roller coaster stacked on top of a roller coaster stacked on top of a roller coaster and you can jump from roller coaster to roller coaster and you've got guns and people are shooting at you. That's the experience of being on those skylines and we want to show that to people because that's so different from what you would saw. Um, so soon, uh, not soon, but down the road there will be some really new, amazing, exciting stuff. But we have a lot to show, and that's one of the reasons we, have, we need so much time to show it before the game comes out. Um, there will be, I guarantee you, in the same way that there was... Um, exp I guess to call the explanation for the... There were... You understood the basis for the genetic stuff in Bioshock 1. Um, you understood some of the principles of how the city worked. Um, you'll have some of the same stuff in, in, the, in this game. I think it's important that people, you, you, you get past that point of people like, wait, how does this work? You just give enough information to let them know. But it's not, we're not interested in like diagramming and, and, and that kind of things. But we, under, we understand principally how it works, yes. Somebody once said to me on Bioshock 1, um, you know, oh, so I'm sure you have all the science of this down. I'm like, dude, bur bees fly out of your arm. And the reason nobody questioned when bees fly out of your arms is because we set up a context for a world which made it believable. And, um, you know, honestly, from an from a engineering standpoint, floating a city in the sky, I mean, if you think about the space station, is a lot more believable than putting a city at the bottom. In terms of what people have done, is then the city at the bottom of the ocean. But you just need to make sure that there's, you've thought about it. And you have, and, and for us, it becomes interesting drama. I mean, like the city leaking in Rapture became really interesting drama. And, you know, for us to talk about the construction of the city became interesting drama. I'm just not interested in explaining things to explain them. We'll make it part of the drama. Uh, Bioshock Infinite is a game for people who love the Bioshock uh, franchise but are looking to re-examine what a Bioshock game could be, re-examine the types of gameplay, re-examine the types of characters, re-examine the types of environments, and be su completely surprised again by the franchise.